All right, here we go. Um, so this is a little uh, run through for the patch that I made recently and how I think the other patches should look as well. Um, I'm going to go through the Photoshop file and the steps that um, you would have to do to get a similar result. Uh, I'm going to create a new one uh, along the way, so uh, it might get a little bit messy. But overall, it should be pretty good to follow. I cut it up in places if I need to, um, so it doesn't become like a giant mess. So let me go into the file itself. Um, so this is one I made uh, as an example. A um, few characteristics of the image, as you can see, is that it has big, thick borders on things to um, really give that like, patch kind of look and make it like uh, readable for like smaller sizes as well. Because if you like zoom all the way out, you can still read it. And in Photoshop, it's not the best idea to zoom out in there. So let me open it up like this. So this is like on full size. As you can see, there's like little ripples on the side and that kind of stuff. Um, and it works pretty well and like, I think this is about the size that it will be on the screen, maybe something like that. And you can still see like a little, the smaller details and that kind of stuff. Um, but if it's like really small, it's still very readable. And I think that's something we have to be very aware of. Um, so we can use this in multiple places as well. Um, Cause in some instances in the UI in the future, you want to be able to use these uh, images on a smaller scale as like their emblems, that kind of stuff. So in that case, we should be aware of readability on the smaller scale and the medium scale. Um, and part of that is just like, you almost got to think in like a cartoony way, I guess. Um, Big thick borders and simple elements for readability. Um, spacing, from what I've seen in all the examples, um, a lot of the patches are pretty crowded with stuff. And um, I think that is definitely a characteristic that we want to portray as well, um, as long as it stays readable. So, as you can see, we have like these radar lines that are fairly light and if you like zoom out it's mostly the highlight on it that makes it readable um, but it's like a little bit of a background uh, element instead of it being like a, a major plot point of the whole thing uh, another thing that I added instead of like just having strike on it uh, I decided to have like uh, the Latin translation for Knowledge is power, since the Shrike is an information warfare ship. And its main power is going to be like radar and EMP and stuff. I think that's, that, that would fit it in the universe as well. Um, so I think uh, what we're going to do now is make a, a patch for the Pegasus. And um, the Pegasus is, a, is an assault transport vehicle. And... Uh, as you've seen in the game, you can have a shit ton of weapons on it. So it's also like very offensive or like offense oriented. Um, so we might want to play around with that in terms of it, like like uh, uh, a line that's like a light bringer or just like something that portrays the transport part of it and the assault part of it in a sentence and then we can be fancy doing it in Latin or we could just do it in English. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll see what works. So in terms of the Photoshop file, um, what you will have is um, a smart object, which is gonna be the uh, layer that holds uh, pretty much 90% of all the shapes and uh, images. In the effect folder, there are three 
layers, which is basically the same smart object, only duplicate it with different effects over it to give a specific look. So in its simplest form, it's just this, which has a little less of that 3D look. It's more flat um, with the detail on. You can see that it's adding uh, a bit of shading in places and adding like another devil and boss on it to make it a little bit more 3D-ish. And then the shine uh, adds a very... it's almost invisible so that might not even be needed but it should add like a, just a little bit of an extra highlight on the outer edge from a specific angle um, to just like round it off a little bit. Um, the backgrounds folder holds these items. So basically what we're going to do mostly is like all the like outer stitching and stuff and the thicker parts, also the text, are going to be done in the smart object and then the backgrounds with like color, accents, that kind of stuff uh, are going to be a separate uh, going to be outside of the smart object so we have uh, a little bit more control of it and it doesn't get all the same effects laid on top of it because we don't need that at that point it's that that's like the inner part of it um so yeah you can see that like, it's just uh, the basic shape in the center with color accent with a slight bevel and emboss and then the bottom has its own uh, layer as well so I'm going to throw these in Shrike folder. These are going to can stay the same. So let's dive into the smart objects. So in order to open that, you just double click it. And this is what's inside of the smart object. Um, so yeah, these are all the elements that get that all the effects laid on top of it in the other uh, file. So I kind of clean this up a little bit. You can see I had like some previous like strike thing. So if you want to add something, just add it, hit control S. So you save the smart object. And then when you go back to your PSD, you will see that it's added. Um, and I thought this was a little bit too busy, so I didn't add it. Um, but it could possibly work with a different patch. So just gonna keep it in there. Uh, same as for this, so I'm gonna try this. And also, again, it's like very thick and readable and then easy to, to see on a smaller scale as well. Um, this just mostly blocked all the other stuff. Um, what's inter interesting to see since they're all getting the same effect laid on top of it, like it's on the same height, if you will. I thought I heard something. Um. Oh, I did. Dog barking outside. I was like, what the fuck? Sorry. Um, yeah, so it's like on the same height as the other, like the outer rim, I guess. Um, so like, create that like layering effect of like having thicker and thinner parts but yeah again like this was laid straight on top of the cockpit and, and the shrike itself just didn't uh was lost in detail so uh, i kept that out as well so let's throw all of this in a group i'm gonna call this shrike sp I'm gonna throw this away. Or not throw it away. Uh I'm gonna make it invisible. So let's go to the Pegasus. I'm gonna use this image. Um this was the easiest one I could find with a proper mask. There were different ones as well, but I think this one not as dramatic in its angle. And this one's a bit thin, so like the shape around that we will build around this would be not as interesting as well. It just gives us a lot more room to play around with. 
So just select everything, copy it over, create a new layer, paste it in there. And as you can see, it's huge. Scale it down. So, yep, still recording. Good. I always, uh, it's one of my personal practices is adding two lines from the rulers to make sure that I know what the center is. There might be a smarter way to do that. I just find that an easier way of doing it. So I'm pull this Pegasus back up so we will have that whenever we need it. We're in a backup group. All right. So what I did for the Shrike is add a cutout filter because um, you love the seeing the examples that we've seen. Like this one. Like it's very it's almost like a cartoony type of style because um, like gradients and stuff are hard to do or it's not really readable. So it has to be like very simplistic. Um, so we're gonna. Try and mimic that with the cutout filter in the filter gallery. We have to play around with it a little bit to see what gives us the best result. You can see like it number of levels is not always the highest is not always the best. Do you want to see some of the details? So I want to have that highlight over here. Stick with this for now. Control S and then we can have a look at what it looks like over here. Oh yeah, we're gonna turn off the Shrike. All right, so when you look at this, you're like, Ugh, it's a little bit ugly, but don't worry about that yet. Um, we'll replace this effect with uh, it being in the background. Um, and if that doesn't work, we'll try to figure out another way. Um, so now what we want to do is create a thick stroke. Around this, so let's say we want about 20 pixels. Get. I, I think I like to use one of the colors that's inside the image itself to keep like a unified feeling of it. Um, yeah, this will this will always be adjustable in the end, so it's not. Super important to pick the right one. Straight up. <laughs> Straight up the gate. Um, so let's stick with uh, like that one. So let's have a little look see at these. So as you can see here, the, the other stroke has like a, a a bevel and emboss on it. So what you can do, uh, what I would do is just copy this over the effects of that shrike. And we're gonna hide this whole thing again. Oh, I forgot a step. Um, we're gonna duplicate this first. So we have a secondary one. And then do rasterize laser layer style after we put the fill on zero. Basically, all we're gonna have now is the stroke. So now we're gonna do rasterize layer just layer style. And then we can remove this effect again. We we have the the stroke on a separate layer, so it's easier to work with. So this is gonna be Pegasus stroke. Pegasus fill. 
Cool. So now we can paste the layer style um, for the stroke. Um, as you can see, the color went to white, and that is because of, I think, the inner glow. Yeah, there we go. I think we want to put that to overlay or multiply. Let's use soft light. I think soft light is a better look. It keeps that. Um, have an awesome place, but also keeps the color. So let's do Control S. Get back here. Cool. All right. So now we gotta figure out a um a background for this. Oh. Let's see what we're gonna do. I think what will be cool is adding some late shape. We can move it as a whole, scale it if we need to. Let's add. Something like that. Give it a oh, I said re add it. That sucks. Something like that. Put a two uh, G red. Oh. Duplicate that over. I think we just gotta rotate it a little bit. Seeing that it's at the right rotation. I think we need to add a stroke around these as well. They stand out a little bit more so we can make these a little bit thinner. Oh, we make them the same lighter color. We could also add a gradient to zero. See what happens with that. Um, to flick. So. I'll be want to do that in here. Bill, make that a gradient. Skip that for now, then. Just uh, do the stroke pen. Five side. And copy and paste. 
duplicate both of these, and it's the same steps as with the ship itself. Try as layer style, and then I don't want to merge them. Let's just wait with that for now. Can turn these off. Um, I think we want to keep them for now just to make sure that when we want to use them again, we just turn them on, adjust it, and then do the same steps. All right, save. And so I think what we want to do for this one is definitely Search these. Pressurize layer. Cut these and put them in here. And then back here, pull these two invisible, save it, then so we'll deal with them missing over there um guess we should probably pull these up here but then we want to have that overlaying effect so we'll have to figure that out uh, uh the merch layers the lasers um so for the background elements you can also just take these effects Copy and paste, and they will have the same texture as the other one. All right, so next up, let's do the background. Yeah, I think we can. I'm gonna just leave them on top for now. Good. Uh, all right. So let's go back here. Um, so you can do this step in several ways. Uh, usually just start with like a basic shape and then form it a little differently where it needs to be adapted. That's definitely not the good shape, I think. She'll be missing this whole... Well, the overlaying part is... I like having that overlaying idea. So we can see what this does. Otherwise, what you can do is... Fuck around with the shape a little bit. Delete that. Sure, this is a continuation. What I do then is get the convert point tool. And then when you click and drag on it, you can like, smooth it out a little bit. You definitely you don't let, want that super hot edge, and that won't work very well with the effect we have in the other file. Uh, 
Uh, you also want the white arrow. I'm pointing at my screen, you can't see that. You want the white arrow for moving individual pieces. If you have the black arrow, so that's like the path selection, um, then it will just select the whole shape and we don't want that. So give us some issues. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of this shape. Um, let's try a different one. Circle's not ideal, probably. All that rotate it. All right, so let's figure out where we want to put some form of text. Um, So what I'm looking for now is just see what a just like I type in assault transport helicopter patch and see what is usually used or what's kind of a just looking for a little bit of inspiration. Um, a lot of these have like shield shapes, and I want to put an assault. Vehicle next to a shield shape it doesn't really make too much sense to me. Here is an interesting Pegasus, by the way. <laughs> Squished shapes, a lot of circles. Even though circles work pretty well, uh, I do want us to try and stay with it, away from those if we can, because it's like such a contemporary shape that is used. And I kind of want to spice it up a little bit, because if you look at the expands patch. I guess this little rounded triangle shape is something it's more like futuristic. This is a fairly simple shape. This is square. This is like the same as almost the same. Squished. I'm gonna try a diamond shape, see how that works. Or that kind of triangle one. Um, so are we gonna do that? So, uh, polygon. Three sides, I don't want a star. Let's do smooth corners, or eight of ten. This thing. Then because I'm on the text layer? No. Uh, 
That's extremely annoying. We have to do that afterwards. No, oh, that's just super strange. Okay. And then we'll do the hand. Just gotta eyeball this a little bit, fortunately. Um, so what we can do is additional line. So what I'm looking for now is like creating a little bit of a balance in the terms of where things are on the patch. Um, we want to keep it in the center because that'll be easiest to work with. Let's see. Alright, so stroke. That's the outer one. And let's start with 10. That's gonna be, you know, that a little bit thicker. Compensate. Or, like, it's the, the most hour thing, so that will have the thickest stroke. We should have the thickest stroke. Uh, 25. Let's do that. Get the same color, so it's like, all right. and then copy the slayer style, duplicate that, fill style. I did the wrong one. I need a new style. There, style. Good, there we go. All right. Might want to just rotate. All of these in here thing. They center it. We'll deal with the fill 
later on when we figure out the actual shape and colors and stuff. Um, I kind of want to do the text next. Can throw away these for now. I guess we need to place when I scaled, so just sort of throw those away. Uh, not very happy with this open spot here. We'll have to see what we're going to do with that. So, uh, let's see. Next. Let's just start with simple Pegasus. I'm not going to get stuck on what to name it. Center that. I think what we can do is be a banner for this on the front and then on the top we can do like some uh, transport or die text. <laughs> Something dumb as that. It can work. Also, I think, um, say if you want to have like a, let's see, about six, wanna have some extra shapes working. Goodbye, radius. Like combining shapes can result in something interesting. Um, so you just get both shapes if it's done saving, and then merge shapes. Um, you do need to like redo the actual layer style, so cheeky thing to do is just duplicate that, merge the shapes, copy it, paste it, and then another one. Now we're, we're getting some more interesting, or like a little bit more interesting background shape that we can play around with. Um, a little bit more room, it was pretty tight packed. Um, and I think we can kind of work with this. Um, for the time being. So we have to redo this one. So let's like duplicate that again. Set fill to zero. Tries layer style. Copy these. Paste. That's working again. Good. Um, so the text. Make that a little bit more dynamic by giving it a little bit of an arc. Um, so what you want to do is go to the text tool and then you have like this little icon at the top here. That can that will give you a bunch of options. A bunch of ugly options as well. That. Or that. That might be interesting. Um, but you don't want to go absolutely crazy with it. Like I would just use arc mostly. Arc lore is just it could work but you have to like use the actual patch shape for it. Let's see is there a, there's a bulge. I think this might get an interesting look. Um, so yeah, it's always smart to just keep a backup for things. That's what I do like 90% of the time because I like to experiment a lot and just 
if I screw up somewhere, then it's gonna be a hassle to like get that back working. Um, so we want to make this pretty thick. Five, yeah. Let's do thirty-five. Same color again. So it's mostly just like repeating steps all the time. This works. Shrine's layer style. Cool. Save it. And see what that gives us. Big fan of the bulging effects or the f stroke too much. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna make all the outer edges white. I'm not a big fan of the colored. We can do it on the Pegasus itself, but like on the other ones, I don't really like it. So keep this all at white for now. Almost white. And we're gonna get rid of that bulging effect. Done. Let's keep it nice and flat. Centered. Let's see if we make it smaller. Could technically fit the bottom nicely. Twenty-eight. Oops. Try that. And then the this can go down a little bit. We can kind of get that layering in place, which probably give us a nice look. Duplicate that to the top. Let's do. Um, death transport. Bit cheesy, but. Changing the name is just the easiest part of this, so I'm not too worried about what it says at the moment. Uh, let's reduce the stroke to Duplicate them, but fill to zero, pressurize layer style. Let's redo that. It's 25 or 20. Kind of looking at. I don't want to overlay it because it doesn't look too pretty with the outer edge, but I don't want that just like nothing at the bottom. Let's 
try that for now. Um, up, well, God damn it. Okay. Uh, so now let's duplicate them. One zero. Tries layer style. Change the names. So I know what it is. Turn these off. Save. Right, so one of the problems you can see now is just like it's unreadable and it's mostly due to the fact that these colors are too close to each other and so as an example that's why I made these like a totally different color. Um, I think we want to try and do that with this as well. Um, so we can either make the text a different color or the stroke itself. Uh, I want to try the text first. I use the Pegasus or uh, cool, cool. So we're gonna we can go for like a green orangey look. This one. Same for this. So it's for the background. Um, That's going to be in the original file, so let's see what we can do. Okay, we cannot do that, so... Make a copy, moisturize layer, select the whole thing. And then just cut it and paste it in the backgrounds layer. You have to go back in here and set the fill to a zero. Let me just turn this off and put that back to 100. Turn it off. So now you can see the text is a little bit more readable. Um, we want to make the outer edges a little bit darker as well, just to create that more of a contrast. So now we want to place the background in position. Something like that. Let's just increase the size a little bit. It's going to be underneath the outer rim, outer edge. So it won't be a big of a deal. And then we're gonna copy this layer style, which is that little texture. Paste. Uh, I think it's pretty much invisible because there is... There we go. Yeah, because it's like pure black, so... I want to avoid that at all costs using pure black because it's just like making things unreadable. Kind of like... Yeah, the blue's not really gonna work, so let's go for a darker greenish color. This might be too close. We do want to create a little bit of contrast. And a little bit more color. Yeah, subtlety goes a long way. Try something like that. And you can always adjust it because it's in your own layer style. So it's it's fairly easy to make any adjustments on that. Um so let's see what are we gonna do here. Now we can start playing around with placement again and overall shapes. 
And... Yeah, I want to see if we can copy over the Pegasus shape itself properly. Let's copy this, turn it off in here, and save it. Paste. Always offset for some reason, and then I think that has to do with it not being like a complete image to all the outer edges of the image size or the canvas size. So I always have to like play around with placing a little bit. And we're gonna copy this, paste it here, and remember to turn off the color overlay. Um, so in addition to that, I want to change the texture a little bit. We can do either like pick an entire different texture, which might not be the best solution because then it's not a unity anymore. So we can just adjust the scale to 260. Then you, you just have like the little extra difference in layering uh, that comes into play. Um, so it doesn't look like it's the same part because this is like a patch on top of a patch, right? We want to actually like portray that properly. Um, cool. So I think what we want to do is like make the death transport part bigger and color it more red. So let's see, I'm going here. I have to redo the stroke part, but that'll be fine. Let's do it right about here. Oh, selection was still open. So deselect. So we can delete the layer. I want to curve this a little bit. Yeah, just like a little bit, so it's not like straight on, and it it like tries to be part of this little like, curve on the outside. So in addition to that, we can do two things. We can either make this like a patch on its own or try to do the same thing with um, yeah, so it's either that patch or let the text just be patch itself. First, we gotta see if the stroke fucking fits. Um, otherwise, we just have to. Yeah, that's when trouble start to happen. A little bit annoying. Let's scale everything down so we have more room. Or try and be smart boy and just increase. Kind of gets close to what I want. Um, so we can just increase the canvas size. So it cheat a little bit. And then we can resize it later. So yeah, there we go. Now we have a lot more room. Close this. And I think we just double click this one again. Nope. That's slightly annoying. So we have to do it by hand on this one as well. I hope that doesn't screw up anything. But we'll see. Give it. Yeah, I think I do want to have that patch around it. Um, 
So... Angle tool. Find that middle point. Somewhere around here. Out. And we can... Skew. adjust the shape so I'm gonna add mix the points in the center here select shift select the outer points click shift and then drag it down select these Scale those inward. There we go. All right, so now we got that outer border. Um, so we're gonna go through the same steps as the other one. Um, so what we're gonna do is add a stroke. Five now. Bill, I think we want. Yeah, just copy this over. Paste. It's the same. Almost the same size. Let's scale it down. Bit thicker is not too bad though. Um. I'm gonna stick with it for now. Uh, duplicate it. Measure as layer style. Oops, after setting fill 0%. And this. Copy and paste. Um, so now you're gonna see this little issue. Um, so this is where like backups come in, into play a lot. Um, so what we're gonna do is call this batch stroke. Put back in front of it and then just hide it. Or let's see, it, hide it. But we'll always have that little security blanket. So, control click on the rectangle here. And then what we can do is just delete it on this layer. Select. Now it's like actually on top. We can try to... Um, merge it a little bit by hand. You can also do something like this, which will probably go better if you just click on here, control click, then go to your new rectangle and then just press delete. Then it's not really you know, merged. So then the strokes just, mm. yeah, this is just a stylistic choice you can do. Um, you can kind of like choose like having that little border around it separately uh, in the middle here. Or we can see if we can like hook this up and then delete on this whole center part. I'm personally not opposed to this. Keep it a little bit cleaner before making the choice of adding too much detail. I wanna where my lasers at? Uh, stroke zero one one top stroke bottom the 
Let's hope this is top. Your top, right? Yes. <laughs> Good. Let's try bottom. Group them. Lasers. Boom. I got rid of those. Okay, let's go back to the text. And I sent this to the, oops, this to be the same color as you. Good. So let's see where we are at. Okay. So I think what's going to work better is to pull the Pegasus up a little bit. You can see like it's going to lay on top. That might be interesting. Let's do that. Then we need to work out the background of the death transport. That's that. Again, uh, turn off the effects and duplicate it and then just copy it. And we can. Oh. Uh, sometimes when you copy over a shape, I guess, um, or it becomes a path, and a path is not directly the same. So, what you can do is. You create a new layer and then you when you paste it you just see this line right you're just like okay what the fuck where's my fill and that kind of stuff so in order to fix that you just um make sure that your layer is selected and it has to be a new layer uh go to layer then new fill layer and then just do a solid color and then okay what's gonna the name gonna be this is like a banner Top banner shape, and you can just select a color. Now it just works like any other regular shape again. So what we want to do now is get the color from color overlay here. Let's copy this over. Cancel, cancel. Because we don't want to make changes. Paste it. Actually, we can just copy the layer style. Done. So in order to have this stand out a little bit more, I want to change the color uh, so it's not the exact same because that's just going to be boring. Um, so I want to make it. Let's see, maybe just a gray. that that's slowly getting somewhere um we have a big patch of nothing here and not too fond of it um there are several things that we can do with that we can either pick a different pegasus or rotate it or just add a little tiny detail uh, what I saw you do a lot is like use the stars, which which can work, um, but we don't want to put it on everything. Um, so let's see what happens here a lot. Mm. Bird and text. We already have text. I'm giving it a, like a number or something. I mean, if we're gonna name it Death Transport, just an image of death itself could be cool. 
But yeah, creating that could be a bit annoying. Um, let's see if we can find a royalty free one. Death damage. Settings. Search set? No. <laughs> Alright, images, tools. Uh, choose with modification. Just want like a scythe. Type that. Scythe. There we go. Uh, label. Okay, so make sure that when you search for stuff, label with ruse with modification. Um, then you can just technically just use it. Uh, but you're going to get the most shitty images on here most of the time. Um, let's see. I don't think you just like, there's no like copyright on a scythe. Uh, so you just like recreate it if you see a cool one. Just make sure it's at least mirrored or something like that, so it's not like directly recognizable. So I could kind of cheaply use this one. Uh, let's see, open it in a new thingy. Copy it. Uh, copy image. So let's see what we can do with this. First of all, I want to group this a little bit better. Uh, don't need you anymore. Well, it's somewhat grouped, I guess. Just paste it in here. Select. Delete. Select it. Uh, want it to be black and white. Could be interesting. Um, so it up to stroke and ish. yeah, just like rusing the layer styles is your best friend. As soon as you like get a little bit of a hand, hang on the where things are exactly so you know where to find stuff that will make life a lot easier that was, that was big as layer style. Yeah, let's just keep that in for now, I guess. Uh, copy paste. Ooh. Oh, I forgot something. Bill zero. Then we do rasterize. There we go. Copy a slayer style. That's gonna be on top of the thing. See what happens. Oops. 
I forgot about the moving of the Pegasus stroke. A little bit better. Let's save that. Uh, sometimes when you save it and it doesn't change anything, just close it and then double click uh, this one again. Then it will work properly. So let's just move it into place. I should use the keys for that um, to be a little bit more precise. Something like that. It's decent. It's not the best one. This, again, is something like, do we want the name Pegasus in here? Does it need to be there? I mean, you can see. The name. So. Well, we can try. Yeah, now I'm mostly just looking at. We've got a few elements to play around with now in terms of placement. And just like placing stuff's gonna be a little bit annoying, I guess. Uh, scythe, stroke. Uh, yeah, once, once you have like the, the elements you wanna have in the image, then we're just playing around with it will make it a lot easier. Or like you just yeah you have the elements so you can just like see what works best and find a a proper balance because uh, like maybe you want the background to be smaller maybe I'm gonna pull the scythe down a little bit and the Pegasus um, Pegasus stroke Pegasus fill and we have a lot of room in here. We can also go like ham and just oversize it. But then the shape itself of the patch is not going to make too much sense anymore, which will be kind of a waste. I like how this continues. So, for the cheekiness, let's see. Save. That's back in its original spot, right? Yeah. What also be cool is this huge. At that point, like when you scale that R, you might want to like redo the stroke a little bit. I like how it sticks out though. So that's it's an interesting thing to work with. I don't want things to be like, you know, like perfectly inside of the patch all the time. And creating that depth definitely adds some uh, layering that makes it look like a little bit more dynamic and stuff. Just want to make sure that there are not like too many parts just barely touching each other. Uh, that's a bad habit. I let's try this. And then 
then almost dying, so. I mean, you get the point. And it's gonna be a lot of, you know, trial and error and seeing, just like finding out what works or what doesn't. Um, in case of this happening, like when you've like reskilled something, um, this is why it's so important to, oops, well, that's an issue. To keep that original, like having all the backups and stuff. Uh, Cause now you can just cut a duplication of it. And then paste it, copy this over. Delete this, and then you know that it's the same skill again, so then it's just like a matter of like putting it into its proper position. And you probably already have seen a little issue here. So you can cheat and just throw it on top. Um, can't. I mean, it works for most of it, but you're missing that. Um, Way to solve that is um, again. Make sure you have a backup of the out. Which we do. And then control select the chip. Make sure you have the order selected and then delete and you won't see a difference now but you will now now you see the outer border is deleted now when you save it and you go back to the full file and you don't have that problem anymore uh, so now it's important to make sure that that's placed correctly. Um, so a few tiny touches that you can add is one as an example. Um, do something like pick a color and just find interesting shape you want to change. Why are you not working? That should work. I don't know why it's not work. Oh, I know why it's not working. That's why it's not working. <laughs> Right, uh, so that's because we did it with a color overlay. So with the color overlay, instead of using that, just take this and that off. Fill. With Shift F5, you can fill a selection. And paste that in here. 
that's that original color again and then you can play around with kind of stuff so you can you can use this like extra coloration for like pulling the attention of the viewer to a specific part um so yeah you just play around with that a little bit see see what happens it's probably best to do it in a separate layer so you just create a new layer and it's just like colorization or whatever and turn that to overlay or so we do want to have the actual texture in it, so we'll have to try a different. Uh, let's see, blending, blending styles. And if you have like any interesting um, brushes, you can just use those. I don't know, like special effects brushes or. little flower in the background come on so we can see what we're doing yeah no a rubber ducky all right let's see what else we have natural round special effect square thick heavy oh finish dry media drop shadows dp brushes the graphic brushes. Okay, and we don't need those. Sort of brushes. Okay, some interesting shapes, but they're so small, it's just not going to look very good. And that just like depends on like what you want to do with it. Like what, what I usually try and what might be interesting. Oh, sorry, your triangle is it? Um, I usually just either pick a square or a circle and then see what we can do with it. Something like that. Put this back on. Overlay. Screen is probably best. Uh, boop. And then you just got to make sure that your actual color is pretty dark in this case. It's like, do you want to mimic this orange? Then now what you can do is select this again, go to fill color and then put the saturation on zero. So it's just gray. Then you can just use that layer on top of it to colorize it in a certain way that you want. So then you would fill this with that uh, green color. So that was like 17, I believe. Um, Hard light, vivid light. Hmm. It's not exclusion either. Ugh. Yeah, then you have to like manually make sure the colors are working, I guess. Um. Yeah, I guess that's like most of the steps that will get you the type of result that I'm getting, uh, which in my opinion, I think is a lot better than what we have so far. Also a lot easier to play around with. Let's delete this layer. And then we'll have a you know, consistent style for these things. Or it's just going to be a little bit all over the place and it's not going to match the, the universe, the, you know, that kind of stuff. So we kind of want to make sure that they all seem to be from like the same kind of universe. Let's try one more thing. You want to try to have a little bit of color difference in the background. Can 
also do is just duplicate that layer. But you, you can only do this all the way at the end. Add a... Well, you could technically be a vector mask, but just like change the color in this. Get close to eyes. And then you need to just like start removing. With the eraser. Get like the same idea. And then you also get a little bit of a free Bevan and Boss. Get some extra layering in here. Um, you can cheekly just like up this a little bit. Get like stands out more, or change the size. Kind of the same effect. Um, but yeah, uh, make sure you don't touch any of these like shading settings when you like copy things over because that's important to have it in the same uh, setting. So it stays consistent. You seem to do that. Shit. Oh. It is what it is. So, yeah. Um, I guess, like, if you work cleanly and stuff, um, you should, or you should have, like, everything grouped. So, we call this, like, bonuses. One. You go. So, in order to save it as a thing with a background, oh, I forgot about that. Oh, okay, we can do it differently. Sorry, I'm thinking out loud. Uh, okay, so we go to effect, then we do Control Shift E. Oh, Control Alt Shift E. There we go. Control Alt Shift E creates a new layer with everything that's visible. So it's the same thing with these things, right? Um, so everything that's visible at that point, and you have to be on a visible layer or folder, will be merged together and flattened into a single image. So now we can call this Pegasus Death Transport. Um, and the final step that we have to do is control click this so we can get a mask for the alpha. So first we have to like control A and fill this with black back here. Then fill this with white. So now when we save it, we can go to TGA Patch Pegasus Death Transport. Now make sure we save it at a 32 bits per pixel resolution to get the alpha export as well. Then we will have a sport.
then you know that's the same thing uh with like it's visible in the small it's visible in the large and you can definitely like screw around with like the outer edge color so you can make that orange and the text white or something like that right um so one final thing we want to do for this since we increase the size to like 1200 by 1200 is drag it in as a new file you can see it still has the alpha so that's all fine and then we want to do here is it's kind of annoying because it's not really centered it doesn't feel centered um quick way that i do to check that kind of stuff see if it's like centered or anything just like create a box want to have is the same distance from the bottom as the top if it's possible do now it's just like and sometimes it's just a little bit eyeballing but if it's close enough it's it's probably good right um then you also have to make sure that your alpha is still correct which is not So, do this, select that, first delete everything on the outside. So now when we move it, it's not going to be such an issue. Kind of want to be somewhere around, there you go, now it's dead center. So again, select this again, go back to the alpha. Select in first, fill with black. Select inverse again. And we fill with white. Deselect. And then we should be good to go. So we can delete these. Go to canvas size and make this a 124 by 124, just like the other one is. Um, New canvas size is smaller than the current, so some clicking might occur. That's a little bit of an issue. So in that case, make sure that it is actually the same size. Drag in one of these. Paste it, and then you can see that... Get rid of all this white shit. Not the same size, so... Yeah, that's kind of the issue that I caused because I cheated with like making the canvas bigger instead of making everything else smaller. So if we ever want to change this one, this death transport one, we have to go through this every time, which is a little pain with the dick, but uh, it is what it is. So let's do adjust the mask yet again uh, take the selection do inverse fill it with black do inverse again fill it with white select It's very close. It's super close. Oh boy. Oh yeah, you can just when you rescale it, you can see width and height. So 10, 20. Alright. Final one. Select the inverse. Back. Select the inverse. White just to be safe. 
these selects. Image canvas size. Make sure we save. Yes, thank the Lord. And we just save this over the previous one. So Targa. Match Pegasus. All right, and you're done. So now we have same size other ones. Yeah. Um, yeah, good thing that you can see here as well. It's like, this is like the, the gray, white, and blue. This is like the green, white as well, but okay. And orange. So then you can like kind of make like themes for each patch, right? And then we can expand on these like, okay, you have like Death Transport 1, Death Transport 2, whatever. And then we can play around with like the stars and that kind of stuff. But that has to be thought out in your original design already. So we'll, we can have a chat about that when, when we're at that point. But yeah, just keep that in mind. Um, sorry it was a bit long, but hopefully this will help you with creating the others as well. Um... Yeah, okay. Uh, thanks. And if you have questions and stuff, just let me know. Otherwise, uh, good luck, buddy.